We're here at BMW of Peabody with Sam. Sam, uh, how long have you been working uh, at the BMW dealership? So I've been at this particular dealership for about eight months now. Mm -hmm. I'm coming up on nine, started in January, but I've been working with BMW vehicles for about three years now. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty competent in things from the 60s all the way up to present day. So right now I'm gonna show you some of the present day stuff um, on our newer models. There you go. Well, we, the reason we're here is we've been talking for several months on the po we have a podcast, the Gloucester cast, about, you know, uh, just what we really wanted to get to the bottom, down to the bottom of is real world EV answers, not speculation about, is it going to blow up in my garage? No speculation about, you know, how, you know, are you, how far the ranges are, real world, this is how this particular vehicle works. So what are we looking at right here? So this is a 2024 BMW iX. It is our fully electric SUV. Um, typically these things will run a range of about 250 to 300 miles depending on driving habits. Um, more so as a weekend car for most people that pick these guys up, but could easily be a daily driver as well if you want it to be that way. Um, I find them to be actually phenomenal vehicles. I've driven some myself and like I said, I'm very old school, but I actually do quite enjoy driving these whenever I get the opportunity to. Um, at the end of the day, it is really just a normal BMW vehicle. Um, it's just getting used to the whole charging aspects of things that really kind of make it stand out from the rest of our lineup. Um, uh, let me ask you a question. So sure. let's, let's get here's, right off the bat. Let's get down to it. This is where you're going to charge. This is where you're going to charge. Where can you charge? it? Uh, pretty much anywhere there's public charging available whether you do that at home or if you have somewhere at the mall at work anything like that you have a couple of different options for chargers when it comes to fully electric vehicles so if we open this guy up you'll notice there's two different charging ports here there's an ac charging port which is going to be slower level stuff and you've got a full dc charging port which is going to be fast charging or as we like to call it level three charging that's typically what you're going to find at public charging stations like the north shore mall and things of that nature these level two chargers are going to be more the at-home solutions for kind of daily use stuff. Um, how, how much is uh, generally a, a range? How much does uh, a charging station to cost to install your house? Um, so if you install a wall box like the one we have over here, it's typically going to be mm, between the ranges of $600 for the box itself. And then they range anywhere from $800 all the way up to $2,000 depending on you know, the wiring capabilities that your house is able to provide. Okay. So plus, not, plus there is the site work that goes along with installing. So you're going from a 110 volt to 240. Right. Um, but when you charge at home, it's significantly cheaper than going and using, you know, the charger at the, at the mall, for example. Okay. That's where you get your real savings. And let me, let me do this for one second. By the way, our guy behind the scenes here, <laughs> Chris Langer, Nakanakanopoulos, uh, who is much more knowledgeable about this stuff than me, and he agreed to come and hang out with us for this uh, little test ride we're going to take. So do most EVs uh, come with both of these ports? Yes, typically um, fully electric vehicles are going to come with both of these ports, again, to access that DC charging stuff that's available um, publicly. Um, Plug-in hybrid vehicles are typically only going to have this one port just because they have a smaller motor. They don't need that much juice to get them to a full charge. Mm -hmm. So just, Joey, for a little perspective on like a level one charge, which is 110 volt that you'd have at your house, if you plug that in, you get about eight miles of charge per hour. I think on this car, it's six to eight miles yeah, per so hour. So then a 240, which would be installing something like this wall box, you'd get more like 24 miles per hour charging. Then you've got DC fast charging, which on this particular car, I think you can go from, um, you can get an 80% charge in 35 minutes, Just I think is the number. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it depends on the driving habits and it depends on the uh, strength of the charger. A lot of these level three chargers don't put out as much. I've seen them range all the way up from 20 kilowatts an hour all the way up to 80 to 100 kilowatts an hour. So it just depends on the supplier who's providing. And what's the cost on one of those level three ones? Level three, can you have a level three at your house? No, I think, I don't think you can, maybe some people could, but I think most people, the standard would be installing a level two. Level two, and again, level two. That's a 240 volt connection. And, and how many per hour, how many? It's about, on this particular car, it's about 24 miles of charge per hour. Okay. So you charge it overnight, you're charged up. Right, yeah, so that significantly uh, cuts down charging time compared to a 110 volt. I mean, if you have a 0% battery and you're charging on a 110, it'll take you almost a week to get this 200%. 
if you get that level two, you're looking at 10 to 12 hours for a full charge from 0%. All right, there you go. So now this, this car, uh, compared to a Tesla, compared to a Rivian, like, you can, can, can you pull up to a Tesla charging charger? That's the one charging station that we don't provide. That, well, that most manufacturers of EVs don't charge. Tesla usually has their own specific thing. It's called an NACS charger. Okay. Um, however, from what BMW has told us, within the next couple of years or so, we will be converting to that style of charger. So it won't really have this particular setup anymore, but it will have the Tesla style setup. So that's kind of becoming the new standard for electric vehicle charging. And there are adapters that you can buy. So NACS is the North American char charging standard. So all of them are starting. That was the Tesla standard. And all of the EVs are starting to move to that connection. Now, are there, now correct me if I'm wrong. On your phone, like if you have an iPhone anyway or, or uh, Android phone, is there, there are maps or, or if you say you know navigate to the nearest charging station mm -hmm. is that something that happens that is something that happens so on this particular vehicle you can do it within the navigation screen inside the car or when you buy this car you download the my bmw app you get a whole kind of system set up there you can do it straight from the app and um, when you get these uh, brand new you also get two years of free charging through electrify america stations as well oh, cool. the other thing you can do joey is like if you had a uh, if you were planning a trip say a 600 mile trip um, you can plug in, here's my destination, and we'll map out your trip for you awesome. and tell you, I would recommend stopping at this station. You'll be at about 80% or whatever. So, so now there's no, there's no traditional engine here, there's right? no traditional engine. So you get a little, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing you get a little bit more cargo space. Uh, yeah, honestly, it's, um, are you talking like cargo space in the front? I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about trunk, trunk space or, or wherever it happens to be. Surprisingly, no, the only extra space you get is the windshield washer fluid. There's no frunk in this particular vehicle. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, BMW engineers do not want you touching this stuff because things can go horribly wrong if you try and service your own EV if you don't have proper certification for it. Actually, to open this hood, it's a two-man job to do it, so you can't just pop it open on the side of the road and call it a day. Interesting. Yeah, All so right. there's no frunk space on this one, but you do make up for it in the rear where there is particularly um, you do have a little bit of extra charging space under here that kind of makes up for the front. This is where the level two chargers that come with it as well, and then a roadside repair kit if you need uh, to get a flat along your road trip and things of that nature. Go right ahead. So, all right, this and this button right here, I assume closes it. So what's the range again was like 250? Uh, about 250 to 270, depending on your driving habits. All right. And how fast will something like this go? <laughs> um, pushing north of 130 miles an hour. I don't know particularly you're going to want to get up that high. It's yeah. a little bit scary. The acceleration's really, um, what you'll see when we drive, it's uh, pretty exhilarating. All right, let's check out the, oh, ready? Let's check out the interior. Uh, you know, just like many of the other, I haven't been through a ton of SUV, uh, EVs, but just like a lot of them, I love the minimalist design and the, the lack of clutter on the dash. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, panels up there for, for information screens. And uh, I guess right here, the, the use of like the crystal knobs, is, is, that, is that something that you use in just the EVs or is that in all of the BMWs of uh, so lately? That's actually an option for um, BMWs. It's called BMW just glass controls. Um, you can get these in kind of an anodized gold or an anodized silver that kind of matches the interior trim here. Um, this is a, an upgrade that comes particular to pretty much any of the higher end SUVs that we have. So what will we need to know to drive this vehicle. So, so I've never driven an EV in my entire life. What do I need to know? Um, so one thing I like to tell people is not be afraid. At the end of the day, it is a car. Um, we try our best to kind of make it as comfortable for you and as seamless a transition from a normal uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. So when you get into it, it's gonna be the same driving characteristics as a normal internal combustion engine vehicle. When you actually start driving it, that's where things start changing. You have things like regenerative braking, um, things you can adjust and driver assistance things that we can go through on the test drive as well. All right. And um, What was one of the other things? You know how like the EVs are very silent and you kind of worry about like you're backing up like someone's not going to hear you. Do you have is there an option on this to like 
make it uh, make a, a fake noise uh so yeah when you're backing up you'll hear a little bit of kind of a hum on this guys right, yeah. yeah um that's safety standard for across the uh across the board for manufacturers okay. um, so there's no way to turn that off um, however when you are driving it we do have what's called active sound design in here um makes some pretty cool noises they're designed by hans zimmer he's a very famous uh, mm. composer um you'll hear that while we're driving as well there's some cool noises that can that can be turned off as well if you don't enjoy that stuff but i particularly do mm. and uh what, what is the uh, uh base price on this vehicle this vehicle outfitted the way it is right now this vehicle in particular is probably going to run you about the 70 to 80 thousand dollar range 70 to 80 yeah. okay. and that varies with options of course now is there anything with the government like uh you, you know if you get a you, you get an eb there's a x amount of a tax credit or anything like that right now or is that not is that was that something before and it's not now i'm not sure yeah so goes. as far as i know that is still kind of the thing i know the incentives change as time goes on depending on the time of year as well and depending on the model of vehicle um, i don't know the particular uh incentives that are available for ix's or this vehicle in particular um but there are always incentives available as well. I'm, I'm, so, not, I'm not talking about for the for the i'm talking about gov from the, gov from gov the government tax rebate so currently it's um a seventy five hundred dollar tax a rebate on the price of the car um, if the vehicle is less than $80,000. And that also depends on your income level. Like there's individual head of household and married filing jointly. So it depends on your income level, whether you qualify for that or not. Awesome. All right. So am I driving? You're going to be driving. I'm driving. All right. Let's hop in. All right. I'll get you comfortable here. Everything is very minimalist. Um, even the leather that you're sitting on right now is all vegan. Um, nothing in here is um, used by any kind of like animal or anything. Mm -hmm. It's all vegan plant-based materials inside this interior. All right. Yeah. Um, I want to get you a little bit comfortable first before we head on to the road. Mm -hmm. Mirror controls are going to be right here, left and right respectively. If you need to pull into a tight space, you'll click that to pull your mirrors in manually. This is where there will be adjustments as well. And as you saw, you can adjust your seating position, however you see fit. Um, steering wheel adjustment is over here, so we're going to have to adjust the steering wheel up and down. I'm going to press the start button for you. So, uh, does my foot have to be on the brake? Nope, you're good. Uh, from here, you can make all the adjustments necessary um, to get yourself into an optimal driving position. Alright. I feel pretty comfortable right there. We're good there? Yeah. Alright. With all that being said, I think we can get it out on the road. Let's do it. Alright. It's going to function like a traditional gear switch, yeah. Oh, so that's R. That's I, I would have thought, I went like this, <laughs> and I would have thought that that was, that, that was going to be forward. So down here gets me to drive. Correct. And I'm going to drive one. All right, here we go. First time letting off the brakes on an EV. Oh, wait. Is he in regenerative braking right He's now? He's not in regenerative braking mode. This is awesome. a normal driving mode. Okay. Normal driving mode. Yeah, All okay. Right. Maybe you can explain that as we go. Sure. Ideally, we don't. So one of the questions I always, I always kind of, it is a lot. I can see down here, there's something, like the speed limit. Yeah, is, that's it, your heads up display. Heads up display. Yeah. You can see like how fast you're going and the speed limit. Correct. So it's gonna be interesting to me, like the feel, like a, a traditional combustible combustion engine, like, you know, you get that kind of feedback. Oh yeah. Like, I'm a, like it's gonna be interesting to me now, like hitting the gas, like how do I know what like pulling out into this you know we have traffic right now right? wait till you feel the pickup what's the what's the zero to 60 on this any idea off the top of your head Ooh, off the top of my head i'm not sure uh god i want to say it's maybe north of three and a half i want to say closer to four that would be, that would be my guess but yeah. that's a 
that'll that'll snap your head back. <laughs> yeah, the torque is absolutely instantaneous. It's not you don't have any lag as you would in an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, does this have like uh, you know when you're coming up to a car, it's going to automatically brake or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. So that's known as our um, forward collision mitigation. So if the car in front of you was to slam on its brakes. Um, you weren't paying attention for whatever reason or you didn't react in time uh, the vehicle would engage the brakes to avoid a collision for you and the same is true if you're in the city and people walk out in front of you um, those same system will engage to avoid a collision with people as well so as far as uh, this navigation system is this native this is native to BMW correct and is there an like would you is there a negative to, to using like Apple CarPlay um, I wouldn't say a negative so much anymore. The uh, navigation in cars nowadays is actually oh, pretty shit. Yeah. <laughs> instantaneous. Um, yep. yeah. um, the navigation is actually pretty good. I'd say it's on par with Apple Maps, Waze, and Google Maps and things like that. Um, you do get real-time traffic information with this as well. Um, I say the advantage to using the navigation system in an electric vehicle is it does show you charging stations along your route and in your um, particular area that you're in as well. Gotcha. So I was just going right along and I decided to hit the gas a little bit and yeah, and yeah head snapping for sure. Yeah, and that's in just our, um, our personal mode. If you click the my modes button down here on the center console, you have three different driving modes that you can go through from. And then you'll notice so on the screen, cool. they pop up. You got sport, oh. efficient. And then you have a few other kind of... Expressive. Yeah. What is um, expressive? Expressive uh, doesn't really change driving dynamics, neither does relax or digital art. This is just kind of ambience modes. Um, All right, we're going to go into sport mode. Uh-oh. And see what happens. Go ahead and click down on it. Oh, does it, does it change the sound of, like, when you hit the gas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it gives you, like, a, you're like, you're, like you're giving that throttle. See what happens. But wow, Jesus, this is it's quite comfortable. The visibility all around is spectacular. And uh including up to the sky, we get this beautiful full ceiling glass roof. Um you notice there's no shade here, it is opaque glass. If you click this little button right here, yes, uh the one right to the right of it, one lower. Right here? Uh, a little right there. If you click that, you'll hear that, and our roof becomes fully transparent again. Oh, wow. So no traditional sun sunshade. It's all opaque glass. So now how do I get to my... Um, how do I get back to the uh, mapping? Um, so if you notice on the bottom taskbar over there, um, that little navigation guy down there it's right next to the music symbol yep that'll take you right into the map uh, i gotcha and can you speak to this you can there's a little microphone over on your steering wheel uh, if you tap that once you could tell it to change the temperature give you directions places uh, okay. change the radio station turn the volume up and down all right let's see how this works right here i'll tap it do i have to hold it now just press it once okay. you'll hear a little beep show charging stations Yep, there it goes right away. Alright, let's see how this goes. It's a rocket! <laughs> it's a rocket! That is pretty badass right there. Oh my god. Yeah, no problems, uh no problems uh, merging. Let's let's no. it. <laughs> gets an A plus in the merging, uh for sure. This is very refined. Sport mode right now. I don't think we're too far. We'll, we'll just fly back here. Chris, did you have any uh, any kind of questions or, or about what you know? What what are your what are your impressions? Well, it's a very comfortable car. Very, um, it's definitely got that sort of luxury feel of a Tesla. Probably a a, a step up. I mean, Tesla is a very minimalist. This has, I think, everything that you would expect from a BMW. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, it's a very nice car. This is my first time being in this particular EV, so it's really really sharp. 
Yeah, emphasis on the ultimate driving machine for these guys. <laughs> I like this sport mode. I like how it gives you that little, that sound, that throaty kind yeah. of uh, exhaust <laughs> yep. sound. Courtesy of Hans Zimmer himself. Hans. So are these vehicles, like if somebody said, you know, I want to I want to purchase one of these, are these available um, like at once for immediate delivery or are these order only? Uh, these are available. We have a few on inventory right now, um, just depending on the configuration that you're looking for and options and things like that. Um, I'm not sure delivery times for um, orders, but they typically range between the six to 10 week mark, depending on options and things like that. Okay. And what are there, are there, what are some of the like popular options for this particular vehicle? For example, can you purchase um, an upgraded like large pack battery or is the battery configuration always the same? So you got a couple of different options depending on the model trim that you get. Um, right now, I believe we're in a 50E, so that's going to be uh, elect dual electric motor, so all-wheel drive. Um, you can get the M60, which is going to be uh, a little bit less range, still all-wheel drive, but it's going to have a lot more uh, power and torque behind it as well. Um, those are kind of the main two that we kind of um, kind of float through. Uh, if you get a different type of EV, like a 4 Series or a 5 Series, you have a few different um, battery options for that as well. Cool. What about road size? Here's a question. This is this question comes from Chris McCarthy. What you know how you have traditional AAA, right? Mm -hmm. What what is there as far as roadside assistance? So like you know, tradition is it? Tra what, how you want? Why don't you take? Yeah, that? it's pretty much um, BMW's version of OnStar. It's a complimentary roadside assistance for the lifetime of the vehicle. Um, you kind of have to dig through the menu to find it on there. I can show that to you later. But it is an option that you do have whenever you buy a new BMW EV. And you also have emergency roadside assistance as well. This little SOS button right up here, that's for if you get into an accident or the vehicle uh, starts on fire or something like that, any kind of like major emergency situation, that's what that particular button would be for. But as far as towing services and stuff like that, BMW does help you out in that sense as well. So that was the second time that's come up. Joey brought it up when we first stood in the garage around like, oh, a fire, because people always say, oh, you know, when I was talking about buying an EV, people would say, oh, I'm worried about you, you know, catching on fire, you know. And the fact, if you, if you look at the statistics around EVs versus combustion engines, EVs are 60 times less likely to catch on fire than a combustion engine. Yeah. So that's just a, a myth. As far as myth busting, when it comes to EVs, that's a huge one. Correct. Oh my goodness. Yeah, these things are actually uh, very, very, very safe. Um, contrary to popular belief, as you said. Um, I mean, there's no real... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, there's no real major concern just for our drivetrain and stuff like that where things could be catastrophic. Yep. And how long how long has, has BMW had a like a a EV for sale in its regular lineup? Like when was the first BMW made widely widely available? So the full the first fully electric uh, vehicle that BMW put out would have been the i3 that was back in the early 2010s. I want to say it was around the 2013 mark. Um, that was our small little compact car. It was a very polarizing design. Not a lot of people liked it. A lot of people loved it. Um, those things, after a while, they tended to be not so reliable. But once these guys came out and they refined it a little bit, um, we found that they tend to be a lot better than those particular cars. I thought I always thought those cool those cars were pretty cool looking. They were tiny, tiny Kinda cars. Like minis. They were almost like minis, but. The range on them was horrible. The range was like 90 miles or something oh. per charge. I think that was one of the big yeah. issues with it. But it was a, it was a, it, like really early to market. It was right, one of the yeah. first luxury of, EVs. Yeah, it was one of the first EVs, um, EV companies other than Tesla that was really putting them out to the market. So, you know, you gotta work out bugs as time goes on. And once you figure Is that it the out. one that they, they, you see in a lot of police departments? Like they get, you know, they've, did Warren give one to the... He might have given one. Like, it was a... Yeah, because yeah, like that was a smaller... Board. Yeah, that's right. Didn't he... Like, he donated one to the Gloucester Police Department or something. They did have an EV. I think that might be what it was. I, I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what that was. Yeah, yeah this is pretty wild. Um, 
And so, and, and now is there, how, what is the range on this on this particular vehicle again? Like um, so fully charged? Depending on the model, this particular vehicle, you're looking at about 350 miles of range on this guy. Mm. Which is a good solid, solid range yeah, for an EV. Figure. You can get from here to New York City on a full charge. <laughs> I mean, I, I got my, my new pickup truck, I have 5,000 miles on it, and I've been driving since not last, no, I've had it since last November, 10 months. So, again, you know, what I would say is like, maybe EVs aren't, you know, there's some people that, you know, they fl flip out and they're like, oh, it's terrible, I could never do it, this, that, or the other thing. But for some people, it might be a tremendous, tremendous idea. You know, if, if what you're doing is, you know, just going up to the mall and back or within a, like a, a 30 or 40 mile range um, on a daily basis, see, up to that. And that's quite a bit of driving, really. I mean, it's just with a lot of these cars, the, the, the big change I think that people have to get into their heads is like, you can't say, oh, we got to go to work this morning. I'll get gas in the morning. You know, you've got to allocate time to charge. So whether it's in the evening or overnight, you do a level two charger from your house. Yeah, that's the, the, I think, the big consideration for a lot of people. Yeah, I think for me it would be, I get home and I just plug it in. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, if you don't have a, if you don't have a, maybe if, if you live in an apartment and it doesn't have a charger nearby, maybe, maybe it isn't for that person. You know what I mean? Like, because then you, you, you are chasing it, you know. Maybe, I don't think that would be convenient for me. But, but a lot, the, the other thing that like a lot of people, um, or I became aware of, you know, over the last year is you, th you think about like up at Gloucester Crossing, we have that bank of Tesla chargers that everybody complains nobody really uses next to the Ace Hardware. Mm -hmm. They're kind of hidden back there. A lot of people don't know they're there. You know, when you have the, um, an adapter to use the North American charging standard, you, know, you buy an adapter, they're about 200 bucks. Um, and if you use that, you can go in a car like this and you could run over to home goods and marshalls or walk across to market basket and by the time you're done your car is charged 80 percent mm. you know so it does charge pretty quickly it's just you've got a it's a mindset of getting ready to say like okay i'm going to charge while i take care of these errands or whatever mm. yeah i can see that i think i would really want to have a charger at my house though yeah yeah because I, you know, again, like if we if we if we're just throwing all the cards on the table, if I'm at Market Basket, I, maybe I just don't want to have to go over to Ace and then, you know, sit there or walk from Ace to Market Basket. That would that isn't to me. That's right. Not, that's not convenient to me. Yeah. yeah. But they just put one at. They just put a couple of stop and shop. I see. Yeah. And I think you're going to see more and more of these chargers. And those are level two, I think, that they put in at stop and shop. So those are, you know, they're they're fast enough to get you kind of that that extra set of miles that you need before you get home mm. what are some of the other um myths that you find yourself maybe having to to bust for people when they come in and they check out a vehicle like this um so honestly the big one um as far as ownership costs go is the whole it's cheaper to charge um it's actually going to be closer um on par to a normal internal combustion engine if you're really driving it every single day if you're not using it all that much um it will save you some money in the long run but if you're constantly taking it down below 20 percent charging it all the way back up you're going to be paying about 40 to 50 dollars for a full charge on that guy but that's in a public charging station if Correct. you if you charge it at home you're at about the, a quarter of that yeah just about um it's all depends on personal preference and how you have things set up lifestyle and stuff like that um I try and typically figure that stuff out before I show people these cars just to kind of get a generalized idea of how living with an EV would um, affect them and how convenient it would be for them in particular. But you also said that there is, um, with the purchase of an IX, is currently two years of free charging? Correct. So you're getting two years of essentially free gas. Yeah. So um, wait, is that like at the charges that are not at your house? Correct. So yeah. it's through Electrify America stations only. Um, wow. No shell recharge or anything like that. It's two years of free DC fast charging and they're 30 minute sessions. So like Chris was saying, you can get up to 80% in that 30, 35 minute range. So it's plenty 
Um, and if you're getting that for free within your first couple of years of ownership, that really helps out the wallet a lot. And 80% is about where you want to charge your battery to. You don't want to charge it to 100 Correct. every time. So if you're going on a long trip, you want your three full 325 to 350 miles of range, you can charge it to 100, but generally you're supposed to keep yeah. it to around 80%. Yeah. And so, and if you, again, if you charge it at your house and it's 20%, so it's more like 10 to $15 to fill it up for a full, for the full charge. Yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty good. The other, um, I think, cost of ownership, probably the beyond the cost of the vehicle itself, a lot of EVs are, are pricey, especially if you're looking at something like a Tesla, Rivian, BMW. Um, insurance is, I'd say it's roughly twice as much as, you know, general oh, it is. for a combustion engine. And the, the main reason for that is the batteries, because the battery is... A, that component itself is a huge part of the cost of why EVs are so expensive. So, and if you if somebody hits you and they hit you hard, and your battery is damaged, the the replacement, repair, or totaling cost uh, can be pretty significant. Interesting. That's interesting. Well, this thing is this is a joy to drive. I'll tell you that. Oh, there's a Rivian right behind us. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could, I could, I think for my. Wait, should I pull in this way? Yeah, you can pull in this way. I would say for my drive, for my drive, if I didn't have to have a truck for my lobster company, I think I could do an EV. I, I don't know if I could afford this, but I could. I could. I think it would work out for me. Do you think Joey could wash the smell of lobsters out of the back of this car? <laughs> I can't make any promises, but I think anything's possible. Should we pull right here? Yeah, you can pull in right where this guy's pulling in, just right in front. He's not going to be moving anytime soon. All right. Well, that was a good good yeah. first drive for you. It was fantastic. That was, I mean, I, I'd, I'd never accelerated or, or, or got in a the driver's seat of, a, of an EV before. This is my first one. And um, I think it's pretty... Pretty pretty badass, especially I mean the the, the speed and the, the quickness and the agility. I mean we are in a, a seventy five to eighty thousand dollar BMW, so it ought to be, uh, but it's it's definitely you know, lives up to the hype. Uh, Sam, thank you so much yeah, for, no for, problem. for this. This My has pleasure. been fantastic. Chris, anything anything you want to finish up with? Well, if we take uh, Warren and Stelia up on their offer to keep testing out some of these. I can't, I want to, I'm dying to test drive the Porsche Macan electric. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think, I think we could make that work. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Let me, let me, get, let me, wait, wait. Did you turn it off? No. All right. There you go. See you guys. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> it is a self healing material, so if it gets nicked or dinged, like with some heat, apparently in 24 hours, it sort of repairs itself. Wow. Look at that.